Hey FlossTube, welcome to Creative Wim Studio. I hope you all had a wonderful week. I hope you got lots of things done. Uh, I had a very productive week and I'm just feeling satisfied. I just hope this week is as productive because, oh, I got some deadlines, some major deadlines. Uh, <laughs> last week when I started my video, I had like three outtakes or whatever you call it. I had to do it like three times and I was like, because I, I forgot how I introed my my videos. And I was like, hi, floss tube. I'm like, that's not right. I mean, anyways, I have been collecting all of my bloopers since I started. So I plan on once a year on my anniversary, which will be December 1st, I will have a bloopers video. So you'll see a year of in bloopers. And that made the cut last week. And I even screwed it up this week too. I don't know why the intro is so difficult. I say the same thing every time, but whatever. So, uh, it's been a zoo. You know, what's new, right? Uh, <laughs> last, last week on Tuesday, by the way, today is Monday, October 14th. Last Tuesday on the 8th, we went to, uh, to a concert. We took the boys to the Capitol Theater, downtown Flint, and it was our second time going there for a concert. But we saw Sticks, and it was really good. We had a great time. They sounded awesome. The problem is, there was a lot of songs that I didn't know, uh, like Renegade and Time, what is, how, what's the name of that song? Keeps ticking away. Oh, too much time. Too much time on my hands. Those two songs are like their most popular. And there was just like a lot in there that I didn't know. Not that it, you know, it was entertaining because it was good music. But uh, <laughs> at one point I was, okay, so it was Kyle, Ryan, myself, and then my husband. And at one point, I just kind of look over and Ryan, Ryan's little like laughing and I'm like, what's so funny? And he says, oh, we looked over a little while ago and both you and dad had your eyes closed. I'm like, oh my gosh, oopie day. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> it's a weeknight, you know, and we're sleepy people. <laughs> and then of course Thursday had Ellery and we had the whole gang over except Eric had to work. But uh, we celebrated Kevin's birthday last Thursday. His birthday was actually on Friday, but as I think I mentioned in my last video that we were gonna go up north, which we actually didn't go up north till Saturday because we bought a new vehicle Friday. And he was busy running around getting everything ready for that and it just didn't work out. We didn't wanna drive late up north. It was like a three hour drive. We, we left Saturday, we stayed at his brother's house and which is like it's in Manistee out in the middle of a you know like woods all around pretty much I mean it's a dead-end road type of thing and uh, and it's over by the Manistee River and anyways it's just so peaceful I mean we got up Sunday morning and had coffee and just stared out the window they have a, this big table and then they've got the big window in the kitchen and there's a big oak tree there and then there's like a dirt they're on a dirt road and the, the trees across the street were just vivid color and it was just so peaceful and ah relaxing you know just kind of recharged our batteries and you know i didn't even think about you know oh we'll probably go to church and Anyway, I did not bring the right kind of clothes because I'm thinking, oh, we're going to go for walks in the woods and, 
you know, we're not like, this is not our anniversary trip when we go up north where we go to wineries and all that and we go to dinner and all that. This was, and we brought food because we're staying at his brother's house. So I just didn't, I brought like super casual clothes. I had these scruffy old tennis shoes and then some rubber boots. That was it. I had to wear rubber boots, jeans, and a hoodie to church. I was kind of mortified actually, but I know they're used to having people that are there, you know, out of town people. So they're probably used to seeing people dressed in all different ways, but I usually look way better when I go to church than that. But anywho, no one like shunned us, you know, or made us <laughs> embarrassed, but I was embarrassed. So announcements. The cards arrived. I got the angel deck in y'all. So I have a ton of orders. Thanks, Teeny. I'm glad you could contribute to my, my video here. <laughs> anyway, uh, they're beautiful. I ordered, what's the matter, baby? I ordered uh, 120, but I have a shop that wanted to order through me. She didn't want to order from the company because she has too many vendors and she didn't want to have to deal with another vendor. So she ordered through me and I thought she only wanted 20 and she wanted 50. So that really cut into my inventory. So I think I'm going to order more because they're selling like hotcakes and I don't want to run out of them. So though, and I was going to ship them today. I have them all like ready to go. And then I realized there's no mail today. It's what is it? Columbus day or something? I don't even know, but <laughs> there's no mail today. So, uh, Y'all wanted me to talk more about punch needle. So I am going to put more punch needle in my videos. Uh, I might even, I'm, I'm thinking about going live one day this week just to test out the waters with the live video because I wanna do that drawing for the 3000 subscribers. I wanna do that drawing live, but I've never done a live video on YouTube. So I don't want to like, schedule that and have everybody show up and then I don't know how to do it. So I want to do a live video before that and I thought well I could just do like a punch along with me or punch with me or however you call that and uh, try try that sometime this week. Um, I'll probably do it up at the house because that's where I do all my punch needle and what I'll do is I'll have my camera it'll probably just well, I could use my, no, I can't use my camera. Duh, if it's live video, it has to be on my phone. <laughs> I can't record it on a camera. Anywho, gosh, yeah. Um, I don't have a time, really. It will be probably before my husband gets home from work because otherwise it'll be hard to do at the house. I mean, I could do it down here too, so... I don't know. When I go up and make dinner, though, I really don't like coming back down to the studio. I usually work, finish working up at the house, whether I'm working on a punch needle or designing something on my computer. You know, I try to stay up at the house after dinner. So one day this week, and once I, once I figure out a time, I'll announce it on Instagram and Facebook and my Facebook group. So if you are you know, following me on any of those social media platforms, you'll be aware of when I'm going to go live for the punch needle part. And then uh, the drawing for the 3,000 subscribers where, you know, the grand prize is an original painting and then I have some other things. So there's going to be three winners. That is going to be Tuesday, October 22nd at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it'll be a week from tomorrow. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm I'm already going to have two videos this week. This one and then the live punch with me video and then probably film another floss tube on Saturday since I'm trying to get back to the Friday Saturday you know recording instead of doing Monday. I don't I don't really like doing them on Mondays, but you know, when you're gone on weekend, that's what you have to do. All right, questions and answers. Bobby Taylor asks our Lady of Fatima, was that the story of St. Bridget or am I confusing my upbringing? <laughs> That's cute. You are confused. I don't know the story of St. Uh, Bridget. I would like to look that up though because I love reading about the saints. No, 
uh, Our Lady of Fatima, the, you know, I told the story in my floss tube number 44, uh, but it's about Mary. It's an apparition of Mary where she, she, you know, for six months, the same time, the same day, in the same place, she appeared to three shepherd children um, for six months. So it's about Mother Mary. Edwina Bang, have you ever searched your name on eBay? I, well, I, I missed something. Bobby also asked, were we supposed to say which light cover? If you win the drawing, then we'll, and, and, and that's a whole fiasco. I have to explain that too. Oh my gosh. But uh, moving on. Edwina Bang, have you ever searched your name on eBay? I have. And the reason I have is because a lot of my old licensed products will show up there. And I like to try to get some of like the books. I wish I had saved more of the book that I illustrated. But also people will contact me and say, hey, you know, I'm looking for this Blossom Bucket figurine. Do you have any? And I usually do a real quick search on eBay. And if I see what they're looking for, I'll give them a link to it. But yeah, um, that's a great place if you're looking for any of my old stuff. Um, you never know when somebody's going to put something on there. So if you're like really adamant about finding something particular, you may find it if you search, you know, like once a week or something. But uh, Noelle Wilcox, which is one of my beautiful stitchers. Thank you, Noelle. She said, would you pick or would we pick park products up at Hallmark? So I don't know if they sell to Hallmark, but what you can do, I'm gonna put an um, look up now, I'm gonna put an email, or an email, I'm gonna put an address, a web address right here, but it's uh, parkdesigns.net slash store locator. And if you go there, you put in your zip code, and then you put like the radio, like how far away you're willing to drive to go to a store. Uh, and that will list all the stories, stores that carry Park Designs. Now, what I would do then is call the store because Park Designs, they have a huge line of products. And just because they carry Park doesn't mean they're going to have my stuff. So when you do call them, say, um, I'm looking for Park Designs Northwoods Christmas Collection by Teresa Kogut. So if you word it that way, it's very specific and they'll let you know if they have it or not. Candy Kerr, she asked, have you ever painted a black or Afri African-American angel? I have, and I think in that card deck, I know in that card deck, which I don't have right here. Um, I'll insert a picture so you can see, but I've only painted one, and I, I loved the challenge of the flesh tones, and I enjoy painting it, so I plan on doing more. I'd like to do like one that had three or four angels of different skin color together and maybe holding a strand of hearts or something. I'd like to paint something like that. But, you know, as you all know, I don't get to paint hardly anymore and anymore because my pattern business keeps me busy pretty much full time. However, that's going to change. Like I said, I paint more in the winter because I don't have as many, you know, out, outdoor chores and we're not going as many places. We kind of hunker down, you know. Uh, and also, I, I need to paint a painting for Donna Fidoa and that chair for the um, fundraiser. You guys, it's due. I have to get it done this weekend. I mean, the, the dinner isn't until November 9th. So I, I could wait until the first, you know, part of November, the first few days into November. But the lady that that requested that I paint a chair, that she's going to take it there and everything for me. She wants it to be in the, what do you call it? Where they, um, oh my gosh, what is that called? Juried. She wants mine to be there for the juried part. So I told her I'd have it done. I will plan on finishing it this weekend, this coming weekend. So this week I will be painting that and hopefully get it done this weekend, or it might go into next week a little bit, depending on how it goes. I don't know. I've never painted a chair, so let's <laughs> see. I have a really cool idea of what I want to do. I want to put tin wings on the chair back so that when a little kid sits in it, it looks like they have angel wings. That'd be cool. So that's my plan, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. Carrie, 
Oh, I can't even read my own writing. Carrie De DeJaris. Any chance you have a distributor in Australia? I do not. I don't have any distributors. And then Verpi R, she asked, do you have a distributor in Europe? And again, no, I have no distributors, I'm sorry. And then Verpi R asked also, do you plan to turn those garden designs as cross-stitch charts? I believe she's referring to the garden designs that I showed for the nightlight. Oh, here they are, they fell on the floor. So while we're talking about this, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring this up. So when I went to their site, I looked up the site and put a link in for y'all so you could go check it out. Well, you know, stupid me, I wasn't thinking about the fact that you have to, like this one is vertical. Hold on, I gotta get this on here right. I got it done wrong. Okay, this nightlight is vertical. So you can't put in one that is sideways. Okay, so whoever wins, what you're gonna wanna do is say vertical or horizontal, and then just tell me which ones you like <laughs> that are vertical. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how that's gonna work. Um, because I think, I'll have to look. I think I might have, I got another one here. No, this one might be horizontal. Okay, so here's the deal. I have a horizontal one and a vertical one. So whoever wins t will tell me if they want the vertical or the horizontal. And then just say if you want gardening or you want holiday and or if you want floral and we'll go from there via email uh, we'll figure it out so anyway <laughs> god I got a mess going on here already and I'm just getting going that was it for questions and answers okay so a new addition to my channel is Whims of the Past, and this week I want to show you a couple of quilts that, uh, okay, so if you're new to my channel, you may not know, but I used to design quilting fabric for South Sea Imports, and then I was with a couple other companies for a very short time, but I did the majority of my designing with with. Uh, South Sea Imports and when I first started designing for the hold on let me sit down when I first started designing for them South Seas would make the quilts with my fabric and display them at, at the quilt market okay and they had quilt market in the spring and quilt market in the fall is always in Houston Texas which I haven't yet to go to that show. I would love to. I think it would be a total blast. But I used to go to the spring quilt market every year. Anywho, the South Sea Imports used to make the quilts, and then when they were done with the show, they'd send me the quilt. I mean, it was awesome. <laughs> but then it got to a point where I had to make the quilts. Well, I don't quilt, and nor did I, I didn't know how to quilt, nor did I have time to quilt. I mean, I had two little kids. My licensing business was just growing and growing and growing. And all I did was paint, you know, and design product for companies. So I, I enlisted these two wonderful ladies that lived near me. And they, I gave them the fabric. They made the quilts. And Amy, I think her name was Amy. Let me just look real quick. Her name is on here. Amy Davidson, she designed quilting patterns. So, and then Arlene Minto, she did all of the piecing. Well, I think they might have both did the piecing, but she has, uh, Arlene has a long arm quilting machine, and so she does quilting for people. So she would do all, at least the quilting part of it and the finishing. So, anywho, they teamed up 
and made my quilts for me and then I paid them so that after the show was the quilt market was done I could keep the quilts so that's how that went so I did not make these quilts I designed the fabric though this fabric line was called I just was thinking about it a minute ago and I now it's gone don't you hate when that happens this is a decent sized quilt um geez oh piezo isn't it pretty oh nature walk it was called nature walk it had teddy bears in it but they didn't i don't think they used any of the teddy bear fabric but it had a lot of you know butterflies and flowers and leaves and different things so on the back where they put their names they also put this is really hard to show. So can you read that? It says spinning flowers designed and made by Arlene Minto and Amy Davidson, September 2003 for Teresa Colgate. 2003, y'all, that's a long time ago. But look at how pretty that fabric is. I really enjoyed designing fabric. I really, really did. But what I love about this quilt in particular is the black. I mean, the black just makes those spinning, what you call them, spinning wheels or spinning, spinning flowers. Just really, they just really pop. So kind of get up a little bit closer. Maybe you can see some of the fabrics. Super pretty. And then also in that same fabric line, they made this one, and I will read the back for you. Good Lord. Oh, here we go. This one says, Toadstools and Ladybugs, designed and made by Arlene Minto and Amy Davidson, September 2003 for Teresa Koga. So you can see, so that cute little plaid. I designed that plaid and I designed all the fabrics. And this one has some applique on it. and It's just gorgeous. So in this corner, they made, you know, some butterflies out of the, the butterfly um, material I had. They just enlarged that and then made a butterfly. They've got a couple of um, mushrooms down here, a little ladybug, and some big fern leaves. But I love this one because I kind of like mushrooms. Well, I love eating mushrooms for one. But do I have this upside down? No. I'll try to get you a close up picture of the fabric. Yeah, that was great. My video camera, or my camera just stopped right in the middle, right when I got everything all nice and focused in. <laughs> well, that one's sideways. I'm sorry. It's so awkward doing this. Like, come on, zoom in. Focus. So anyhow, if you are a quilter, look through your stash. You may have some fabrics of mine. <laughs> I haven't designed fabric in many years now. It's been a long time since I designed fabric. And you know, whether I ever design fabric again, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I just, I don't know. I've not, I haven't been approached by anyone. And I, years ago, I approached um, Moda because they are like, in my eyes, in my opinion, they're like the number one fabric company out there. Quality fabrics and, but um, they said my art was too similar to another one of their designers. And at the time I could see it a little bit and the other designer is one of my very best friends in the industry, um, Deb Strain. I'm sure if you're a quilter, you've heard of her and her fabrics. But my art is quite a bit different. And, and when I designed fabric, a ton of it was my teddy bears. I mean, I have teddy bears for every season. I have them traveling. I have them camping. I mean, my teddy bears, they go everywhere. So that was Whims of the Past. Previous finishes, no. <laughs> I 
No. Well, I was going to do the quilts there, but I decided not to. And I don't have any previous finishes of my punch needle and cross stitch um, available to show you right now. I have everything packed up and over on the other side of the studio. Works in progress. Oh, no. I didn't bring it down here. I'm going to have to go up to the house. Dang it. You know, I looked, I looked, I colored my roots today, okay? And while my hair was doing its thing, its magic, and getting rid of the gray, I worked on my punch needle. So I had it. <laughs> I learned my lesson. When I do my, color my roots, I do not leave my bedroom. So I made sure I had my laptop so I could watch floss tube and work on my punch needle in my bedroom. I brought, brought a chair in there because I don't know if you watch all my videos, but there was one time when I had my hair, you know, all the icky stuff in your hair to color roots. I had a white t-shirt that I always wear when I do that because there's gook all over it and it looks horrendous. And at the time I had a cold, so I, my nose kept running and I had tissue stuck up in my nose because I was sick of it just dripping and dripping and dripping and running. And I didn't have a bra on either. I don't think I told that last time, but, and I'm sitting at the, the, the bar, the island in our kitchen, which when you walk in our front door, you see everything but the, the bedrooms and the bathroom. I mean, you walk in and it's all one big open area. And area. And if I wanted to run, which I ran screaming pretty much, I have to run right past the front door to go down the hallway into our bedrooms. <laughs> oh, that, so now I know when I color my hair, I don't leave my bedroom until I am all done up because you never know you just never know oh god this is funny too I don't know if I ever told you all this but so our front door has two long windows that go you know pretty much the length of the door maybe a foot from the ground but nice tall narrow windows so the only thing I don't like about those which I know I need to get blinds they had when we moved in there were blinds on them but they were pink for god's sakes I'm not into pink blinds so I just haven't ever put blinds back on them because we really live on a dead end road out in the middle of nowhere I mean it's not normally a big deal but the thing is if somebody comes to our door they can look in our house super easy <laughs> and this one morning I got done working out and I took my shower and I'm just like running around in this t-shirt, you know, hair's wet, again, no bra, and I'm cooking an egg and I'm just trying to make some breakfast real quick. And all of a sudden someone knocked at the door and I, I, and it was our neighbor. He is now passed on. He would come down randomly and bring stuff from his garden so sweet he would share tomatoes and squash and just anything and he came down to share that with us when he knocked on the door I could I couldn't run past, I couldn't answer the door number one I mean I'm practically naked and then I couldn't run past he would see me because oh you guys it was awful so I just like right down under the I like hid myself behind the island and I, I don't think he saw me because it's not like I mean you have to actually when you knock on the door you have to actually like peek in if you want to see in the house so the minute I heard the knock I just ducked and I was sitting there just going I can't believe this I was embarrassed I just, so anyway I don't think he saw me <laughs> but that's terrible I, I share so much stuff with y'all that I probably shouldn't uh what else Oh, so I'm going to go get the punch needle and I'll just have to insert that separately or whatever. Okay, so I went up to the house and got my punch needle. I have always been a monogamous puncher, but I really want to get a few things going at once. So I'm going to show you the one I've got started. And then I'm going to show you the ones I'm going to get started. 
I have a very small start on this, but it's a start nonetheless. So here is all I have done on it so far. I don't, like I said, I only started it while my hair, I put the color in my hair. So that's the finished side. And I just, I've always wanted to do an all over, not an all over, an all directional um, punch needle. And the reason is because I think it would really, just let them, thank you. Um, is because this would really make a great park designs rug, especially if they'd made like a big area rug. So I, I don't, this is the time of year where I try to think of park designs because I usually go to Atlanta in January and that's when they make all their, you know, the first of the year they're planning everything that they want to, you know, come out with. So anywho, that one and here are all the amazing floss colors that I'm going to use. And I don't even know if this is all of them. Actually, I need to grab a darker green because the center of these, these petals, I want to make a dark green. So the background is going to be a mixture of like swamp water and charcoal. So it's going to be very prim. It's going to have a lot of, uh, the background's going to be dark so everything will pop on it. Okay, so that is one of my punch needle starts. And then I have a couple more I'm going to, okay, three more I want to start. This one I'm going to chart or chart, oh my gosh, this one is going to be done in all creams and tans, very, I want it to look very antique ruggish looking. The other one is I'm going to start an angel punch needle because every single year y'all ask me when are you gonna do an angel punch needle so I'm gonna start with oh my soul so I want to get her started and then last but not least I am going to do a punch needle of Halloween March because it will be awesome and it will be large it's going to be at least as large as the one I just showed you that I'm working on because all of that detail, I want to make sure to get all of that detail so it's going to be large. And I'm probably going to do it in mostly DMC. And anyway, so those are my plans and that's my work in progress. Uh, finishes. All right, so Noel, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, Noel Wilcox. Hi, Noel. She comments, so I know she watches floss to my floss tube channel. And I'm so sad that I didn't iron this first. I got this, this our mail came as we were pulling out of the driveway Saturday. And it was in that in the mail then. So we got home last night, like 8 30, 9 o'clock at night, and this was still in the car when I came down to the studio today. And I'm like, oh, I can show that on floss tube, but it's not iron, so my bad. But it's so doggone cute. And I don't remember the name of it. I don't have the paperwork down here that has its name. But this will be a January release because, you know, it's a snowman, so that makes sense. Isn't it adorable? She did a great job stitching. His cute little happy face. I love his tree. I love everything about it. I love this green linen. I know it's Weeks Dye Works. I want to say kudzu, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But it will be, when I fully finish it and everything and the pattern's released, I'll tell you then. And FFOs I do not have. Hall. Oh, Kevin is such a sweetheart. We want a new couch. And the couch that we have now, we have had since we moved in here in 2001. And that couch has been amazing. It is so structurally sound. And we got it at a country store. It's called Pride and Country up in Saginaw, Michigan. And so Kevin said, well, you know, because this weekend was very laid back and casual. It was like, if we want to stop somewhere, we're going to just stop somewhere. You know, we weren't on a time constraint and we were just kind of free willy in it, you know, doing what we wanted. So he said, well, why don't we stop at Pride and Country and look at some of their furniture? Because we want to get a new couch. 
and we want to get a nice quality made couch. So we went there and Pride and Country, I'm going to, I'm assuming they have a website. I used to go there with my friend Jan when they first started and, and it started out in her, well, I think my friend Jan used to go before she actually had the house she does now, but she used to have her shop in her like little house and that's how she got started. Well then, you know, it grew and grew and then she bought this amazing farmhouse and made the whole house her shop. Then she built a barn and that's, you know, got home decor stuff in it. And then she's got all these little outhouses and all these cool little sheds and things with other, you know, more gifts and things and garden. And that's open more in the garden or in the summer and stuff. And then she has another barn now that she built that is like jewelry and clothing. And then she has another one that is more um, gardening and outdoor stuff and all kinds of galvanized metal and I was going nuts. Well, I saw this hanging over a door and it was the only one I could find in that whole place. Is this not the coolest thing you have ever seen? And when we redo the studio on the other side, I want this to hang over the door entrance into the studio. Isn't it the coolest thing? Check out the old grungy heart and the tin wings are so beautiful. They're awesome. I love them. Everybody should have one of those. Don't you think? Okay. And then the hall to top all my halls. You guys, that sampler came on Thursday, Thursday morning, or no, Thursday afternoon I had Ellery. And when it came in, normally if I get a shipment or something and Ellery's there, I just put it in the back bedroom and I open it the next day. I couldn't wait. And she she was excited too. Like I'm pulling on this bubble wrap out and she's pulling and she's helping me. <laughs> it's so funny, but I can't wait to show it to you. And I'm telling you right now, I am a nervous wreck to, uh, reproduce this. I, I'm going to have to look into a different program for charting my art and everything because I don't see an option on how to do um, one over one and regular, you know, I, I don't know how to do that within my program. Like one over or two, two over two and one over one. I don't know how to mix that within the same chart so I don't know if I just I don't know I gotta work on that because I think some of this is gonna need to be one over one so here we go oh shoot I gotta pause this okay hopefully the glare won't be too bad but I have a lot of windows down here so here is the sampler I'm going to charm you guys. Look how cool it is. I have to hold it so that you can see it while I'm talking about it. Okay, fresh from a great old collection is this wonderful 1806 sampler. It is a very busy and graphic example and is extremely well done. It most likely, it's most likely English or American. You are the expert either way. It is a still, it is still a wonderful item for your collection. It has an old 1970s Garth's auction, Delaware, Ohio sticker on the back. The frame measures 25 and a half by 17 and a half and the sampler measures 23 inches by 14 and a half. Please read condition, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and then I messaged him also. Um, jeepers. Because um, I wanted to ask, I just wanted to know a little bit more. Oh, I know what I can do. I can do this. Okay. He answered me back and he said, it came from a recent on-site estate auction in Worthington, Ohio, in a very ritzy area. 
my wife clerks from time to time for an auctioneer here where we live. He doesn't normally have sales so far away, so I decided to go up north with her. There were two other samplers there also. The family bought one of them. Uh, they, The house was filled with mostly early American furniture and great early smalls, quilts, etc. I liked this sampler the best because it had so much going on in the, the scene. That's about all the information I can give you. I may be able to get the last name of the deceased collector if you'd like to have it. The last name was not on the sales bill. I just purchased a specialty heavy blah, 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 blah. So anyway, uh, I love it. So there's down here, there's like a carriage. I mean, it kind of looks like royalty, this cool little guy with the horses and there's birds this little chair there's kind of some just little random things a little butterfly i love this piece in the center it's kind of it's just kooky it's like this big vase and it's got this flower that comes off this big leaf and then a leaf comes off and there's like a pear just hanging there a the little guy here with looks like um like a key uh, that looks like a dog or a monkey like this nice big gate here for an entrance this looks like a gardening type. I don't know much about samplers, so I'm going to try to do a little research and see if I can find uh, a little bit more about this style because it's really different than anything I've ever seen. But I love it. I hope you guys love it too. And, and I'm excited and very nervous to chart it. <laughs> and when I'm going to do that, I, I really... I really don't know when because I want to take my time and I want to do a really good job with it. That's it for haul. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to, I'll do the giveaway at the very end. My punch needle segment this week is the top 10 reasons that you should try punch needle okay one there's no counting so stopping and starting is so easy you don't have to look at a chart the only like when you get your pattern it has the floss number like pointing to where you fill that in but you're basically I, I feel like you're you are a sewing machine and you are your needle is going up and down and you're filling in spaces with the thread okay but it's just it's like it's it's mindless um, and then it's fast especially a smaller piece I mean if you're doing a piece this big you could get it done in an evening so it's very you know that instant gratification that we all like. So it makes a really nice addition to cross stitch because it is so quick. It's not going to take away a lot of time from your cross stitching. Number three, it's easy to see. You're not counting threads. You are just motoring. I mean, you're just going and you don't have to say, oh, I'm going to move it over three threads and count it and then go down. You, you don't, you just, you get in a rhythm and you just go like a sewing machine. Number four, it's portable. It's easy to take with you anywhere you go. Uh, number five, you already have some of the supplies. You need small scissors, embroidery scissors. You have that if you cross stitch. You need a hoop of some sort. Well, maybe you don't have a hoop, but uh, a lot of you have hoops if you cross stitch. And then you also need embroidery floss, which you probably have a nice stash of embroidery floss and you don't have to use the called for colors. You can use something you have on hand. If you want, you know, if you're just starting and just trying it out, you know, you don't have to go out and buy all the floss colors. You can just, you know, use what you have, to, you know, until you decide if you like it or not. Uh, and then number six, it's not expensive to get started. I mean, you, the things you would have to purchase that are unique to, um, punch needle would be the punch needle tool 
which I use the CTR. The most popular one that I see people using is the Ultra Punch. And I will go, maybe in my next video, I will compare the two needles so that you can see the difference in the two of them. But I use the CTR Punch Needle, the green handled one, which is a little bit longer and bigger around than their original red handled one. Also, for comfort, I put a little gripper, pencil gripper on it so that it makes it even a little bit easier to hang on to. Number seven, I think I kind of mentioned this earlier, but it's mindless. I mean, you can watch TV, I cook dinner, you can do stuff while you're working on your punch needle. You can just set it, set it down, go stir the, you know, beans or whatever and come back and just sit right back down and pick it up. You don't even have to, sometimes I don't even pull my needle out. I, you know, because you're punching and I'll just leave my needle in it and set it aside, go do something, come back, go right back to it. Number eight, it's a stress reducer because stabbing something sometimes feels good. <laughs> My, well, I'll get to that in a second. Okay, number nine, if you enjoy doing punch needle embroidery on the small scale, you can also make punched rugs. And it's the same technique. The only thing that is different is that you're using a bigger needle and you're using yarn and you can make rugs but it's the same technique you're working from the back the pattern is already drawn on there uh, for for the rugs anyways and then you know you're just filling in color with yarn so it's if you like punch needle you can then you know try your hand at rug punching and you can make little ones and then you can make big rugs too so that is one of my punch rug designs. It is also punch needle and cross stitch, but I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what the punch rugs look like. These are hanging in my studio, so um, let's zoom out on that one. I love that guy. And you can see they're, you know, the size of a rug like that one's probably 24 by 35. I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm guessing obviously, but anyway, it's, you know, done with the wool yarn. So see when I zoom in, you can see, and it's just like punch needle. You're working from the back. I mean, it's the same thing. You're just using bigger, a bigger needle, you know, you're using wool yarn instead of uh, embroidery floss. Oh, you know what I forgot to show you too when I was talking about punch needle and how you can do punch rugs? I'm going to insert some pictures of some punch rugs that I did, but this is a punch rug. So if you do punch needle, you can step right into doing punch rugs. And I can talk more about it if you're interested because you can't just use any yarn. It has to be a certain weight. And you know, I can kind of go into a little more detail on how you do this and what you need to get started. Isn't it pretty though? So this is just like a runner. And I made this into cross stitch and punch needle as well. So there you have it. <laughs> Well, I have this funny story. So I know you've heard me say my husband brews beer with his best friend, and I'm also best friends with the wife. Well, her and I were big time into rug punching at one time. I have several. I have sold some. I, yeah, I've got quite a few still, but I have sold some too. Uh, where was I going with that? Oh, I know. She, <laughs> she was up in her bedroom and we, her and I and our friend Linda bought these huge, we had a, a guy in Port Huron uh, that Linda knew this man that was good at woodworking and stuff. And he made these huge frames with, you know, that rug hooking gripper on it. And I mean, it's like, it's huge. It's like that big. And it's great for making rugs because you don't have to move it around. You put it on there one time and you just can do the whole rug. Anywho, she's sitting there in her bedroom by her window and this is like on the second level of her house and she's I mean you're 
especially when you're doing the rug. I can't do the rug punching for a real long time because I get hand cramps. I mean, you're pushing. It's you're pushing hard. And she was doing that. And <laughs> Kevin said when he went over there to see Paul, he thought, man, was she stabbing somebody up there? Because, <laughs> you know, it was just like the silhouette of her and he couldn't tell. He did. You know, he obviously knew she wasn't stabbing somebody, but it kind of goes along with what I said. You know, you're stabbing the fabric. And anyways, uh, and then number 10. And probably the most important reason that you should try punch needle is because, you know, she who dies doing the most hobby win the most hobby. Oh, I screwed that up. This is why I don't tell jokes. <laughs> she who dies doing the most hobbies wins. I know you've seen shirts that say, you know, she who dies with the most baskets win or she, she who dies with the most cross stitch, you know, charts wins or whatever. So there you go. You, I mean, come on. It's just one more hobby. What's the big deal? It's, it, it's, what I love about it is it's fast because I, I kind of like instant gratification and I like getting things done and punch needle. You, you will love it. So, okay. We are going to do the giveaway. So last week the question was, what is your favorite candy? Because Halloween's coming and it just kind of made sense. And I never mentioned what my favorite candy is, but not that you care, but my favorite candy is Ghirardelli's dark chocolate. And it is something that I usually have on hand and I buy it in a little bag and I eat like one square a day and I just put it, I take a bite and I just let it melt in my mouth. I savor it because I only allow myself one piece a day because, and I don't even, I haven't had it in a while actually, um, because I don't eat a lot of sugar. I'm more of a salt type salty savory but anyway if i'm gonna eat candy i want my dark chocolate and then caramel i love caramel caramel however you say it just those little i think it's brocks just those little cubes and put that in your mouth and let it melt and just oh my gosh i love caramel so i'm going to insert the youtube random comment picker here so here we are picking the winner this week's winner for the Nightlight Designs. And the question was, what is your favorite candy? For, you know, Halloween candy. He says, one of my favorite, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the winner is Novella McCracken. I absolutely love that name. I've never heard of that name, but it's beautiful, Novella. One of my favorite candies is Dove Chocolate. I have enjoyed your video and your deck of cards. So thank you and congratulations, Novella. And thank you everyone else for participating. So congratulations. So all I need you to do is email me at the email address right here on the screen. And I'll have it also in the description box below. But if you send me your mailing address, I'll get your nightlight right out to you. And again, remember to say horizontal or vertical. And then just let me know out of the ones that I showed last week, you know, what was your favorite? Do you want florals? Do you want something to do with gardening? And what I'll do is I'll put two or three in there. If you want different holidays, I think there was some Halloween and there was Christmas, but um, I only can do, like if you pick the landscape one or the horizontal one, you know, there's limited as to what I can give you. So I'm sure you'll be delighted by what I pick out for you. So this week, oh, I don't have anything ready. Sugar burger. Okay, this week we're just gonna do uh, the pattern of your choice. It can be one of my new releases. It can be one of my older patterns. Whatever pattern you want, you can pick that out. And um, your question this week is going to be this. List all the hobbies that you do. I might have asked something similar before. I think I, I think what I asked before was other than cross stitch, what other hobbies do you have? But you know, reading, gardening, punch kneeling, quilting, knitting, whatever. I just want to I want to hear all the fun stuff that y'all do. Okay, so this week is the Chinese fortune teller. Was Andy Dan Danlovich? 
Danilovich, and she said yellow 73. So let's do this here. Yellow 7. Oh my gosh. Y E L L O W. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Number 3 is. Da 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 da! I don't want this one. I don't want to do this one. Um, oh, I'm so not prepared. Okay. My favorite. That was what it landed on. My favorite. So, I, I cannot find the basket that has all the... I'm supposed to draw out of this basket. And it's got in there, you know, your favorite song, your favorite book, your favorite this, your favorite that. So, I'm just going to pick one out of my head. And I'm going to say my favorite movie. My favorite movie. Because it's the... Oh, well. I would say it's the only movie I've watched more than two or three times. But that's a lie. Because when it comes to Christmas movies, I watch those, you know, every year. So... But, okay. My favorite movie other than Christmas movies is The Notebook. I love that movie and I watched it a couple times and then I told my husband, I said, you know, it's such a good story, you know, hon, you should watch it. <laughs> He'll kill me for saying this, but he watched it with me one time too. But it's just such a beautiful love story and I just saw something on Facebook today that uh, there were, I don't know, I'll have to find the story and put it on there, but basically this couple it was like they said it was like the real life uh notebook story ending or whatever but yeah it's um ooh, that's a that's a good movie if you have not seen it you need to see it if you don't like love stories then you're not gonna like that movie but my favorite uh christmas movies are christmas vacation absolutely favorite the grinch who stole christmas I like the cartoon one, but I also love the one with um, Jim Carrey. I love Elf. I mean, there's a slew of them that I watch every single year as, you know, a family. Now it's just Kevin and I, but oh, what else? Um, a Christmas Story. Uh, Ralphie, you shoot your eye out. I mean, these are just things you have to watch every Christmas. There's a lot of them that I watch every Christmas, but... That's it for this week. Thanks for being here. If you're new here, thank you for joining me. And if you made it to the end, I'm impressed. And if you have been following me for a while, I so appreciate you. And I will see you again this week doing a live video while I'm doing Punch Needle. And you can ask me questions about Punch Needle while I'm working on it. And then also put on your calendar, please, next Tuesday, October, what did I say? I think it's the 22nd. October 22nd at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if it's 9 p.m. here in California, I think it would be 6 p.m. I'm not sure. The majority of you said nighttime would work best. Some people said midday, you know. I, I know, you know, I can't please everybody, but a lot of people retire and they're like, any time of the day is great. So I'm trying to get trying to get the most people on there basically. So 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time next Tuesday we will do the drawing and I'm going to have my husband down here with me and it's going to be so much fun. I can't wait. So have a great week and we'll see you in a couple days. Bye now.